So I got a silver toy poodle who just turned four months. I've had him for a month now and I want to just share some of the research and findings ahead about the toy poodle while I was looking for one as well as surprises about owning one. So a little bit about Spock. He came from a show breeder who is an APC breeder of merit in the platinum level, meaning they have to have bred a number of champion dogs before they receive that certification. And the platinum level is the highest level for the APC breeder of merit in terms of tiers. And as you can see, he has a pretty calm demeanor, which is what I wanted. And I wanted a dog that had an easygoing temperament, a calm demeanor, so that as a dog owner in the city, it was going to be easy for me to train them in the midst of all the distractions. And a dog who was not too active since I live in a small apartment in San Francisco. I got him from the breeder because I believe in supporting the future progeny of this breed. I think poodles are wonderful and I love the fact that his parents are genetically tested for health problems that a lot of small dogs tend to have, especially poorly bred dogs. In addition to that, I also wanted a certain calm temperament which is what I got. I think overall I'm just really happy with how things turned out. He really is a wonderful dog. He listens well. He's just a very very good boy. Loves to learn. Always playful. Always wants to learn something new. Also his temperament has been amazing. He's calm. He listens well. He doesn't bark you know incessantly. He barks when he's excited when he plays occasionally. Since day one that I've had him he has a very poodle characteristic of retrieving. He loves retrieving. And I asked a breeder if they taught them that, but they didn't. He is just one of those dogs that wants to be with you because when you throw away the toy, he will bring it back to be with you, to play with you. He has a very poodle characteristic of retrieving. So if you didn't know, poodles were bred to retrieve birds that hunters had shot. And he definitely displays that characteristics. He loves to bring his toys to you to play and then like naturally fetch them back when you throw it. And I asked his breeder if they had taught them that and they said no, that's just something he from day one always love to do. He also loves to make a lot of vocalizations when he talks. He has like certain whines that he does when he wants like water or get out. He's just a very smart dog in terms of knowing how to get what he wants. He's also figured out already <laughs> how to break out of his crate somehow. So there's like zippers and by the time that he was in the crate like the first week he already figured out how to move the zippers and get out. Sometimes when he has a tantrum like for example if you take away his doggy bone when he's doing something he shouldn't do he'll get a little like tantrum whine <laughs> that he does where he lets you know like hey like I don't like that or like that wasn't fair he like has a little tantrum moments and he'll like just like bounce around his playpen <laughs> but he comes out pretty quick as you can see he has a pretty good switch on and off mode so if we go out he gets really excited runs but as soon as we go in the house he can calm down within like two three minutes he's highly highly motivated by food he'll come to you when you call outside even around other dogs he just loves food especially since the food I gave him is like this like dried beef stick and he just loves that. So whenever I call, he comes over, I let him chew it on a little bit and then he can go and play. And then when I call him, you know, to train him, he'll come over again to chew a little bit. He just absolutely loves food. So he is very trainable because he has that very high food drive. I also did a ball hard drive test for him and I found out that he has really high pack drive because he always wants to be touching you. If he's sleeping by my feet and I move my feet a little, he always makes sure that his paw or some part of his body is touching it. He's just one of those dogs that love to be with you at all times. He's not a huge fan of being pet except when he's sleepy and in a nap mode and in like a certain area like he doesn't like the head as much so when strangers reach over to pet him on the head which I did at first as well he just like moves away <laughs> he's like eh, no thank you <laughs> but he hasn't like bit me in any way that was like aggressive or anything like that he just has parts that he likes being pet like his belly he loves a lot the air rub he loves a lot sometimes the chest and apparently talking with other poodle owners that's very typical he doesn't really have much of a fight drive he has more of a flight drive so if he doesn't like something he moves away from it because he has relatively high prey and also a high pack drive it makes him easy to train and motivate. Also he just got his second grooming session last week and I will say his fur is definitely a lot more work than I thought because it will just get tangled like right away right after you brush him like the next day so definitely a lot of brushing needed for him and his coat and I'm hoping when he becomes an adult maybe it will just mat a little bit less. He did pretty well in his grooming session 
according to the rumor, just whined <laughs> a lot when the hairdryer was on, which is pretty typical of puppies. But overall, he's pretty taller and everything. I, I can like clip his nails, put the little ear solution in his ears to clean his ears, and he tolerates it. He doesn't like struggle excessively. It's just been a really good boy. If you are looking for a toy poodle, I would highly suggest you find a legitimate breeder who either does shows or does health testing on the parents and has a history of breeding really great healthy poodles. And then ask for the one that's the calmest, the one that's the most human oriented or follows you around, then you can find a dog that will be a lot easier to train because they are by nature willing to please. I hope you all enjoyed that video. If you want to keep up with more Spock adventures, please subscribe and like this video if it was helpful. I'll be posting more of these talking videos with Spock as well as many videos of his day-to-day -day in San Francisco downtown. Now I'm going to take him for his nightly walk, so catch you all next time. Bye!